Britain, Britain, Britain. Birthplace of William Shakespeare, pearly kings and queens, and the common child. These fair isles have lots to celebrate in their rolling green hills and luscious countryside. Rugby here is often stereotyped with a belonging to the upper echelons of society. Rarely do we associate our fair sport with less affluent areas than Richmond or Eton. But there is a beacon of hope in a dense jungle of shitness as rugby clubs battle for survival in the top 10 shittest places to live in Britain. Today, we rate those towns based on their rugby clubs and what we can find out about them online. Hello, welcome to Skegness, Lincoln's most crime-ridden town. Home to the original Butlins. And this phallic-looking roller coaster. It looks like an elongated butt plug and I'm absolutely here for it. Skegness literally translates from the Norse word skeg, meaning beard, and ness, meaning headland. So, beard headland, presumably named after the Viking that established a settlement here. It was voted the worst seaside town in Britain in 2020, and it's not surprising that it's found its way onto our little list, having the highest crime rate in Lincoln with 145 crimes per thousand people. But having spent a few days here, you can see why 4 million people pack their families into the car and pump £480 million into the local economy. Yes, it's not the Maldives or Cancun, but in a post-Covid world that faces a global cost of living crisis, the staycation for young families is an ideal option. Arcades, beaches and theme parks in the daytime and traditional holiday park entertainment keep the kids happy in the evening while mum and dad live at large on two pound a pint beers. Truth be told, it's seaside towns like this that gave me my start in life. I was a holiday park entertainer and I can't help but hold a little nostalgic candle for them. Yes, the clientele might be rough and ready, but they're good people with big hearts and we could make a rugby comparison with these people. They don't care about shapes and sizes, just smiles on faces. And well, isn't that what rugby's all about? Right, so we have just pulled up. And this is it. Um, it's a multi-sports facility, but they've got the rugby club here, they've got a football team here, um, and they've got some sea scouts. There's plenty going on about. So we're going to find a place to pull up and uh, we're going to get some first impressions. I tell you what, turning up, it's not a bad sized club, you know. They've got two decent sized pitches, plenty of facilities. We've got, what's going on here? We've got the Sea Scouts. Um, we've got some football, uh, Skegness Football Club play here. Um, I don't know what. I don't know what they're about. I don't know if they're any cop or not. Um, but we've got the rugby team here as well. Um, so it's a multi-sport facility, uh, which is good to see. I like that. And uh, let's go and have a nosy round, see what we can find out. Right, so we're here in the Andy Hill stand. No, nobody from Skegness Rugby Club know I'm here, by the way. I, I've just pitched up and it happens to be open and there's someone coming over now to have a look at me. No, nope, we're good. Right, so it's actually... I say the Andy Hill stand, it's about 20 seats in here, uh, but it's a nice little spot to watch some ruggers, you know. The track is nice and flat, I'll give you a little view of that in a minute. Um, it's a nice little scene, there's a 4G football pitch over there that everyone seems to be having a good time on. Um, I tell you what, if I'm the opposition fly half here, I'm going for that, every penalty. I'm going to see if I can put that in the AstroTurf. Uh, get that over the fence. It's about a 20 foot fence. I'll be aiming to get that over there. Uh, but it's a lovely, lovely pitch. What I like about this as well is that they don't seem to take themselves too seriously. Um, their bar is called the Hooker's Retreat, uh, which is ironic because after 10 o'clock on the seafront, there aren't many hookers retreating. In fact, they're all advancing and they're pretty, pretty forthright, forthright with it. Uh, but it's a lovely little place, this. I'm well impressed. 
nice little grounds. Like I said before, multi-sports uh, setup. So you've got a bit of football, you've got a bit of rugby. Uh, you've got the Sea Scouts over there having a lovely time. Did did dob and whatever. Uh, but yeah, good size pitch. Fairly narrow. We'll say that it's a fairly narrow pitch, but but good length. Let's have a little look at the pitch. So yeah, you can see over there. Um, this is the view from the centre of the Andy Hill stand. Um, so a nice little vantage point here, a little bit of elevation, not a lot, but a little bit. Uh, two pitches, so you can have your ones and twos play at home, lovely stuff. You've got the football court over there, I say court, it's an astro pitch isn't it? Post could do with a lick of paint, but whose post couldn't these days? Uh, but yeah, beautiful little setup, I like this, I've got time for this. It is worth mentioning, no Friday night under lights here, because... You ain't going to see bugger all on a Friday night game, but it's good enough for training. And they've got, what's that? One, two, three, four sets of floodlights. So that'll do the job for training. So when the holiday season ends, this place becomes a ghost town. And whilst the locals party all summer long with the nation's holiday makers, where do the 20,000 locals turn to for their winter shenanigans? One such place is Skegness Rugby Club. They feature in Midlands 4 East North of the national system after promotion back in 2017. The league is something that the club is just about holding on to uh, after finishing 12th of 14 this year and 10th the season before. Sadly, I'd love to tell you all about the characters at the club and perhaps analyse a bit of footage, but their social media isn't great. They don't have TikTok, uh, their last Twitter post was back in 2017, and their website doesn't seem to have been updated since then either. There is a Facebook account, but a lot of that seems to be reposts of Ruck Rugby and England Rugby. Hopefully, in the future, they'll get back on the social bus and showcase just how great they are. But for now, we'll have to make do with some old photos from 2017.